God. Yeah. 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 And you've already absolved yourselves of all the bad things you did this week. Most of them. <laughs> now this is a funny story. It's a good so this is from my second record. It's a song called Muddy Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. And it was a, it was a pretty big hit for me. It actually was a it was a, a charter really high, but in across the country, but in El Paso, Texas, where the narrative existed, I was the biggest rock star, not rock star, biggest, biggest um, pop star since Marty Robbins. <laughs> yeah, and so, uh, so, I, so we play this show in El Paso, Texas, and my friend Boyd Elders comes down and he says, man, you've got to go to Mexico. It's right, it's a border town. You've got to go over to Juarez. And I'm like, oh man, you know, because this is right when the drug violence was going to escalate and like, you know, there are people, <laughs> 20 people killed yesterday and a little scary. He's like, no, I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. It's going to be great. Come on, you got to go. You're a huge star down there. we got to go. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll go. I mean, you know, because if you don't go, then for the rest of your life, you're like, yeah, I should have gone. So we go over the border, and nobody in the band wants to go except for Bucca, my keyboard player. Chris and, Chris and Michael bail on us. So me and Bucca go across the border, and it's a Tuesday night. It's an off night, so it's real quiet. And we're hanging out in this little bar, and there's like 10 people there. And we're drinking tequila, and just kind of, you know, we're, it's like, 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 like this story. Like, we've just done, this is nine shows in a row. We've been hanging, burning it out like a motherfucker, man. It's, you know, t tour is intense, so, you know, you, when you have a moment to kind of kind of relax for a second, it's a nice thing, and you relax. It feels good. And we're just relaxing, but as we're relaxing, the, the club's filling up with people because they heard we're in town. And it's starting to, energy's starting to kind of ramp up, and all of a sudden it's starting to feel like maybe a Thursday or Friday night. It's like 100 people in the club within about an hour, and they're all buying us shots because they're fans, and it's fun, and we're in Mexico, and there's a bunch of pretty girls everywhere, and all of a sudden, all these dudes in Armani suits, this, by, by the way, let me tell you, this is 95. This is a long time ago. So this is now before everybody had a cell phone. And these guys come in in Armani suits with these flip phones, which were really like, wow, flip phones. <laughs> like, looking, that's some high-tech shit, man. You know, so flip phones. And so, uh, and so uh, all of a sudden, and I'm at that point right now where I, was, I always like to think I got my shit together. Like, if I'm in a club with you, I'm... I'll have a good time, but I'm always kind of keeping my eye on the door. It's just a, it's a habit from being on the road for so long. So, you know, I'm, I'm having a good time, but I'm kind of keeping it together. And the phone comes to me, and all of a sudden I'm talking to the biggest drug dealer in the whole world. Juan Apergon. Hello. My name is Juan Apergon. Like, he sounds like that. He's like, I'd like, I'd like to throw a party for you tonight. Yeah. And I'm like, uh... And he's like, hey, like literally, he's like, well, what do you like? You know, he's like, what kind of girls do you like? What, I mean, like crazy shit. Like, you know, we've got a helicopter. We'll come grab you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah. Huh? And then I have that, like, no, this is the, even though I really want to do it. Right? Yeah. Who can emphatically say they wouldn't even consider that? Yeah, I know, I know you're going to be like, I would, but if you were in the moment and you're like, I know, it's, it's, it's a thing. So, so I was considering it pretty deeply, but then all of a sudden it dawned on me that I would be at this crazy drug dealer's house and he would tell me when it was when we could leave. It could be multiple days. And we're on tour with ZZ Top, so we're playing in Phoenix the next day, so we don't have the time to hang out. So I, I then kind of take a breath and go, thank you, Mr. Abergon, for your invitation, but we're going to have to decline. And then I'm like, all of a sudden, like I hang up the phone and it's like, fuck reality, man. I gotta get out of here. This is right? This is like band killed in Juarez when they refuse to attend party. So I, I go to get Bucca, and in the few minutes that I've been talking to Juan Abragon, the club had gone from them, all these people thinking we were the Ian Moore band, which was pretty damn exciting, to the club thinking that we were Pearl Jam, which was significantly more exciting, and all of a sudden there's the club is packed. And Bucca, my keyboard player, they thought he was um, Eddie Vedder. So Bucca's on a couch with girls all around him. And he's smiling and he's just like sitting back like this, like a Don, right? And he's not going anywhere. 
And I pulled him out of that club, like literally pulled the girls off of him. And girls are mad at me and slapping me and like, you know, because it's their moment to hang out with Eddie Vedder. And we hop in this, we hop in this truck just as all these black limos are pulling up and everybody in the club spills out after us, chasing us down the street going, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. <laughs> this one's called Muddy Jesus. Do we? 